Okay. Thank you, Chairman McCall and Ranking Member for holding today's hearing. Uh, the American people and the families of our 13 fallen service members and the Afghan allies are demanding answers. Secretary Blinken, um, your appearance before our committee today is long overdue as we seek to understand the role that you played in the Biden-Harris uh, administration's failed and disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal in August 2021. And in your previous conversation with my colleagues before me, you claim that you have done everything you can to support Afghan women and girls, yet you excluded them and Afghan civil society from Taliban talks with the UN in Doha. <clears throat> so why, <clears throat> why do you continue to deprioritize Afghan women and girls? <clears throat> Sorry. Just the contrary. We've done everything we can to integrate them, their voices, their views into everything we do, including any engagements that we've had uh, with the Taliban, including in the engagements that we have with partners around the world, particularly when it comes to decisions being made about recognizing or otherwise engaging with the Taliban. So it's exactly the opposite. We've We're made every to effort to engage with the Taliban. We're continuing to hear from those families, and also this committee has heard gravely concerning stories of what it was like trying to get through HKIA <clears throat> as an evacuee. Uh, your own personnel testified that there was little to no guidance from you on who qualified to be evacuated from Afghanistan. So based on documents we received and witnesses we interviewed, at no point did you identify who the U.S. would be responsible for getting out during the non-combat evacuation operations. So did you ever determine which populations were eligible to be evacuated? Yes, absolutely, and that was, that was very clear. There were Who are very, they then? Very discreet populations. Uh, American citizens, uh, legal permanent residents, uh, and Afghan allies and partners, uh, particularly those How who had stood with us. How did your department determine is, which populations were eligible for evacuation? Who was responsible for making those dis, uh, decisions? Uh, these are determinations that are made by the administration, uh, by the State Department, and when it comes to Afghans at risk, there were many uh, Afghans at risk that we were seeking to get out. And because this was such a dynamic situation with conditions changing uh, by the hour, at different moments during the evacuation, Let's talk we had greater access to certain parts of that then. population oh. than others. So we uh, focused Secretary, where we could. What documents did those uh, evacuees have to provide to prove their eligibility? Uh, are you aware of a hall pass? that your department provided instead of legal document identification documentation? We, we sought to do everything possible to get them the um, documents or identification that they needed in order as necessary to get through the Taliban, which had control of the area around the airport, and of course, documentation is necessary you know, the, those, for our own uh, That hall pass that we're talking about were reprinted in mm -hmm. droves. That was then sold to people outside of HKIA. So did you direct them to replace legal identification documents with a forgeable word document. No, we provided, as best we could, legal and enforceable documents. Did? Because apparently they were hmm. shared. I, I, have, I, I have not seen that, but I'm happy to look at whatever information you have about that. Okay, um, you know, during the uh, evacuation, over 80 Afghans who risked their lives to work with the United States government contacted my office for assistance. So when you include their families, that's more than 526 Afghans mm. who claim they faced a direct or personalized threat. But despite the referral to SIV program, my office is only aware of only like 80 applicants who are able to complete the requirements and file. Mm -hmm. And of those three, None have been approved and are still awaiting processing. Mm -hmm. Hearing from those uh, Afghans, the SIV verification process has been difficult and tedious. Mm -hmm. And according to your deputy, one of the biggest obstacles to the verification process came from SIV applicants who have been employed by the DOD contractors. And that was well documented. Yet, you did not ask the DOD for uh, support until the end of July 2021. So why did you wait until just weeks before the Afghanistan withdrawal to fix that obvious issue? Oh. These were long-standing issues and problems with the SIV program going back many years. And as I said earlier, we inherited a program that was totally moribund. There hadn't been a single interview for an SIV going back to March of 2020 when we came to office. We immediately reinstituted the interviews. I immediately surged resources 
to go through the SIV applications. We cut the, the time in half to process the applications. We went from issuing 100 visas a week uh, on SIVs to 1,000 a week. All of that happened in the space of just five or six months because of our dedication to the program. But we inherited a program not only moribund, but that had 14 different steps required by Congress uh, to make sure that the SIV was issued in the appropriate way. And of course, security, usually, usually uh, important. We want to make sure that huh, we're not bringing threats into the country. That's, that's important. Being able to document effectively, yes, that they had uh, been working with us. And the challenge, as you rightly point out, was that uh, because it was with DOD, it was uh, contractors, many of whom were out of business. 